Welcome to the O-Level Chemistry Lecture Series. Today's topic is on redox reactions. So before we begin on redox reactions, maybe we examine around ourselves, the environment around us. Some simple examples of redox reactions. So if you take a look around you, I am quite sure you will be able to find something which is rusty. So rust formation is actually a redox reaction, a very simple redox reaction involving iron, oxygen and water. So what other types of reactions are redox reactions and what is a redox reaction? So let's take a look. So before we attack the notes, let me give you a very quick summary of a redox of redox reactions. Let me get my pen working. So redox, the term redox is actually made up of RED and OX. Reduction and oxidation. The term Oxidation is actually defined by four different parameters. The first one, it is the gain of oxygen. So a simple example would be carbon burning oxygen to give you carbon dioxide. So carbon is oxidized into carbon dioxide. This is the first definition for oxidation. The second definition for oxidation is actually the loss of hydrogen atoms. The loss of hydrogen atoms. So a simple example would be HCl being electrolyzed to give you H2 plus Cl2. So during this reaction, you can see that HCl has lost hydrogen to form H2 plus Cl2. So we say that there are an oxidation process, an oxidation reaction has occurred. The third one is the gain of, is the loss of electrons. Sorry, it's the loss of electrons. The loss of electrons. So a simple example would be Cu becoming Cu2 plus plus 2E minus. So what happens, what happens during this reaction is that the copper has lost two electrons to form the copper 2 plus ion. And as a result of this loss of electrons, something else leads on, which is the fourth definition of oxidation, the increase in oxidation state. So what is the oxidation state? So let me rewrite this equation again. So over here, we see that copper has become copper 2 plus. The oxidation state is actually the number here. There is a number here which is assigned to the element, the atom, the species or the ions to tell you what is its state. So copper is an element. Later, we'll cover more of this. Copper is an element. So its oxidation state is zero. Copper two plus has an oxidation state of plus two. So we can see that from zero to plus two, this is an increase. So when there's an increase in oxidation state, we say that the element here, in this case, copper has been oxidized into copper two plus. So the four definitions of oxidation, when flipped around, will give you reduction. So instead of a gain of oxygen, a loss of oxygen, will be a reduction reaction. A gain of hydrogen atoms will be a reduction reaction. A gain of electrons will be a reduction reaction. And a decrease in oxidation state will be a reduction reaction. So this is a very brief summary of oxidation and reduction. Now let's proceed back to the notes. All right, let's take a look at the notes. So as mentioned earlier, the term redox is actually both reduction and oxidation, and they occur simultaneously. So when one is reduced, when one compound or one substance is reduced, the other will be oxidized. There are four ways of defining oxidation, and the inverse way or the opposite way will be the definition of reduction. So gain of oxygen atoms, oxidation, this is a reduction, loss, oxidation, reduction, Loss of electrons, oxidation, gain is a reduction. Increase in oxidation state is a oxidation. Decrease is reduction. So of all these four rules here, or four definitions here, the rule which is the most powerful, if I can put it, is the last one. Increase or decrease in oxidation number, or oxidation state, to allow us to determine if a substance has been oxidized or reduced. So this is always the most powerful parameter to use. So 
Earlier, I described to you a very simple reaction of carbon burning in oxygen to give you carbon dioxide. So let's look at another scenario, another equation here. So in this equation, you see that carbon and copper oxide are reacting together. And you can see that copper oxide here has lost an oxygen to form copper. So we say that copper oxide has been reduced to form copper because it loses an oxygen. Carbon, on the other hand, has gained an oxygen to form carbon monoxide. So we say that carbon has been oxidized into carbon monoxide. So overall, there is an oxidation reaction and there is a reduction reaction here. So both reactions together give you a redox reaction. So we move on to the next step, the next second definition of, of oxidation and reduction involving hydrogen atoms. So if we take a look here, we see that H2S, hydrogen sulfide, has lost hydrogen. So if it loses hydrogen, we say that it is oxidized. Cl2, on the other hand, has gained one hydrogen. So if it gains a hydrogen, we say that chlorine has been reduced into HCl. In this case, it is hydrogen chloride gas. The third definition, if you recall, is on electrons. So in this reaction here, you see that magnesium has formed Mg2+. So how does Mg form Mg2+. Mg must first lose two electrons to form Mg2+. So when, when, something, when, when something loses electrons, we say that it has been oxidized. So where do these two electrons go to? So you see that copper 2 plus here has become copper solid. So 2 plus to 0, how do you drop two positive charges into a zero charge or no charge? You must gain electrons. So these electrons here are gained by copper 2 plus and they give you copper. So this is a reduction reaction. So again, oxidation, reduction, overall redox reaction. The last one which I mentioned was the, the most powerful rule is the rule on oxidation number. So using the earlier equation, zinc has an oxidation number of zero. Why is it zero? Because it is an element. Later on, we will go into this numbers in more detail. So for now, we take it as zero first. Copper two plus has an oxidation number of plus two. You notice that the oxidation number of copper two plus is actually the same as the charge, just that the position of the sign is a bit different. One is at the back for the charge, one is at the front for the oxidation number. So in this case, we see that zinc zero has become zinc two plus or plus two. So there is an increase, which means that this is a oxidation. Cu2 plus, on the other hand, has decreased from plus 2 to 0. So because there's a decrease, we say that this is a reduction. So overall, like earlier equations, oxidation here, reduction, together, redox reaction. The next part we are moving on to is the oxidation number. So in the equation you saw, you just saw, I gave zinc a number of zero. I gave Cu2 plus plus two. I gave Cu zero as well, similar to zinc. So why is this so? The first thing you need to know is that the oxidation number is the charge of an atom of an element if, if, this is a very big if, if it exists as a simple ion in a compound, even if it is actually covalently bonded. Take note. This oxidation number is not equal to the charge. It's not equal to charge. It just happens, it just happens that for certain elements and for certain ions, for certain ions, the oxidation number is the same as the charge, but it is not the charge. This is very important to take note of. It is not the charge. It just happens to match the charge in certain cases. So. How do we assign oxidation number to 
ions to elements to different species or even to molecules. It is actually very simple. There are a few rules. The first one of which is every single element is given a number zero. Zero. So copper by itself is zero. Cl2 by itself is zero. Cl by itself is also zero. O2 would be zero. O by itself would also be zero. So long as it is an element, the number will be zero. The next rule is the the next rule is the rule which applies only to simple ions. Take note, simple ions. For example, this here. So in this in this case here, in this case here, you notice that give me a moment. In this case here, you notice that K plus K plus has the has an oxidation number of plus one. Copper two plus plus two. Al3 plus, plus 3, Cl minus, minus 1, S2 minus, minus 2, N3 minus, minus 3. So for simple ions, the oxidation number happens to be the same as the charge. It happens to be, it is not the charge. I repeat, it is not the charge. It just happens to be the same as the charge. Another rule which you will need to know is the rule which applies to hydrogen. So hydrogen can react with different elements. So if it reacts with a non-metal, if it reacts with a non-metal, for example, nitrogen, hydrogen will have the oxidation number of plus one, plus one. So this number doesn't change, it'll be plus one. Why do we need to know all these numbers here and here? It's because later on, if you need to calculate the oxidation state of elements or substances which you have no idea what would be the number you will need to use these numbers as the constants to calculate out the oxidation number of the unknown substance so in this case nh3 h is plus one nah in nah hydrogen has reacted with a metal so when it reacts with a metal it will take on a negative one number negative one and of course by itself if it is an element it will be zero so maybe before we move on to the next part of oxygen let's do a very quick and simple calculation so nh3 here we know that the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one is plus one so so let's do a very simple calculation involving hydrogen from earlier. So if you recall, NH3. In NH3, what is the oxidation state of hydrogen? It is always plus 1 because this is bonded to a non-metal. So because NH3 itself doesn't have any number here, it must mean that it is balanced. The oxidation numbers in any compound must balance out to zero. So if H here is plus one, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen? So we let it be X. We let this be X. So, so as I was saying, we let the N be X. And we know this is plus 1. So overall, it must be 0. So x plus plus 1 times 3 equals to 0. x equals to minus 3. So there we have it. We have the oxidation state or oxidation number of nitrogen in NH3 ammonia. It is minus 3. How do we know this? Because we know that the oxidation number of hydrogen when bonded to a non-metal will always be plus 1. Now let's move back on to our notes. The next element which the next common element is oxygen. So oxygen as an oxide is minus two. So for example, sodium oxide, you know that the oxide charge is two minus. So it's a simple ion. The oxidation number follows the simple ion. It is the same, minus two. In peroxide, it is minus one. Per 
per basically means one per so if I per something it means it's per unit per something one so peroxide is minus one superoxide is a special case minus half so you notice here that oxidation numbers do not need to be whole numbers they can even be fractions so recall what I said earlier that oxidation numbers do not mean that the substance has that charge it just happens to coincide with the charge in this case KO2 the oxidation number of oxygen in potassium superoxide is minus half and of course if it is an element it would be zero so now let's move on to checkpoint one so let's find the oxidation number of carbon in calcium carbonate CaCO3 so let's apply some rules we use rule number one and rule number four we know that Ca is Ca2 plus this is CO3 2 minus so if this is 2 plus it means that the oxidation number of calcium is plus 2 oxygen here we know it is minus 2 so what is the oxidation number of carbon so we let it be X we let the oxidation number of carbon be X or be N and we solve a very simple equation so plus 2 plus n plus minus 3 times plus 3 times minus 2 equals to 0 equals to 0 overall all the numbers when they add up it must be 0 they must cancel each other out equals to 0 and we solve and we get n equals to plus 4 so we know that the oxidation number of carbon in calcium carbonate is plus 4 another simple example the total of the oxidation numbers of the atoms in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge on the ion so what does this mean so earlier we had calcium carbonate so carbonate by itself is CO3 2 minus so I can say that the oxidation number of carbonate is 2 minus so how do we find the oxidation number of carbon in carbonate again we let this be n and we know that this is minus 2 so simply n plus 3 times minus 2 3 times minus 2 is equals to minus 2 overall is equals to minus 2 and we solve for this equation and we will have n equals to plus 4 so the answer in checkpoint 2 here is the same as the one earlier in checkpoint 1 plus 4 and plus 4 so you notice that we do not actually need to use calcium in the equation here we don't need to use calcium in the equation here to calculate the oxidation number of carbon there is no calcium we never use calcium here no calcium 2 plus taken into consideration so as a result we use the charge of the polyatomic ion in this case is the carbonate ion the last rule here applies to substances containing two different elements and the one which is more electronegative the one that is more electronegative will have the negative oxidation state so what is the meaning of electronegativity so electro basically refers to electrons negative means electronegative basically when it comes to the, when this word comes together it means that the element tends to attract electrons towards itself it tends to attract electrons towards itself so as a result as a result because it gains electrons for example let's say it's let's say fluorine fluorine gains electrons to give you F minus so if an element were to gain electrons would attract electrons to itself its charge will decrease and correspondingly the oxidation number will also decrease this is zero this is minus one so if it is more electronegative it will be the you will take the negative oxidation state so how do we know which elements are more electronegative so if you recall the periodic table it goes like this this is group one 
and over here this is group 7 and then group 0 as you go across the period as you go across as you go across from left to right electronegativity increases so you notice that chlorine minus 1 nitrogen minus 3 oxygen minus 2 oxygen minus 2 and oxygen minus 2 because these elements are on the right hand side of the periodic table so the other element that reacts with it will take on a positive oxidation number the next rule is actually not exactly a rule it means it, it basically means that some not, some elements can have more than one oxidation state for example transition metals this one we covered before in the topic on metals so transition metals are in the D block the D block is the center block of the periodic table if you recall there are three blocks three main blocks so this block here is the transition metals so transition metals can lose more than one two three they can lose more than one electron they can they can lose more than one valence electron to form an ion of varying charge so as a result this is a simple ion so the rule applies again simple ion the oxidation state of a simple ion the oxidation state of a simple ion corresponds to the charge of the ion so for example iron we know that it can form fe2 plus and fe3 plus so it, this is plus two and this is plus three if you recall in qa feoh2 is a dirty green precipitate feoh3 is the reddish brown precipitate this is two plus this is three plus which corresponds to plus two and plus three and this one here basically means that when we write when we write a compound when we write write the name of a compound containing an element which could possibly give which could possibly have a variable oxidation state that we need to state very clearly what is the oxidation state of the element in that compound so for example if i were to write copper oxide will this be copper one or copper two copper one or copper two because if it's cu2 plus it will be cuo if it is cu plus it will be cu2o so in order to be clear we write the oxidation state of copper in roman numerals together so we so let's say this is copper oxide i will call this copper two oxide so if you look through this five different compounds here potassium manganate vii seven it means that the manganate mn in kmno4 has an oxidation state of plus seven potassium dichromate six the number here only applies to the element in the compound which can take on a variable oxidation state in this case this is cr or chromium so chromium will have an oxidation state of plus six in potassium dichromate six now let's move on to attempt a few questions so we will do checkpoint 31a together so mno2 what is the oxidation number or oxidation state of mn in mno2 so we let x be the oxidation number of mn in mno2 y x any number you want x y n up to you doesn't matter so we let x be the oxidation number of mn in mno2 this this sentence here is crucial and it must be written when you do your calculation we know that oxygen in this case will be minus 2 so this is the constant which we use to calculate the unknown for mn so x plus 2 times minus 2 why 2 times minus 2 because it's mno2 there's 2 of oxygen so x plus 2 times minus 2 equals to 0 0 because mno2 overall has no charge it must be balanced so it's 0 so if we solve we get x equals to plus 4 all right now Pause the video now to attempt the checkpoint. Continue with the video once you are done. Good. Let's continue. 
So MnSO4, we know that SO4 is sulfate. So sulfate is minus 2 because it has a charge of SO4, 2 minus. The charge is 2 minus. So if we let X be the oxidation number of Mn in MnSO4, X plus minus 2 will be equal to 0. So we will get X equals to plus 2. KmnO4, K is plus 1. O is minus 2, Mn again, let it be x, so plus 1 plus x plus minus 2 times 4 equals to 0, so x equals to plus 7. K2 MnO4, again it's the same, this is plus 1, this is x, and this is minus 2, so plus 1 times 2 plus x plus minus 2 times 4 equals to 0. Solving, we will get x equals to plus 6. So if we do likewise for the rest of the questions here, Cr and CrSO4, you will get plus 2. Cr and CrCl3, you will get plus 3. Cr2O3, you will get plus 3. And K2Cr2O7, you will get plus 6. Did you get all correct? Yes. If not, please try again. So the next part of redox reactions is in fact balancing the equation. So if you observe the three equations here in checkpoint 4, you will notice that on the left and right side, the number of each element or ion is balanced. So there's one copper here and there's one copper here. There's one Ag here and there's one Ag here. But what is not balanced is the charge. Ag is plus, copper is 2 plus. So if the charges are not balanced, it means that the electrons in the equation is also not balanced. So how do we go about balancing this? Let's solve the first question together. So copper to copper 2 plus. Let me duplicate this equation. Copper to copper 2 plus involves copper losing two electrons. Ag plus to Ag involves Ag gaining one electron. So when we add the two equations together, the electrons must cancel out. So in order to do this, I must multiply this equation by 2, and then I will have Cu plus 2Ag plus gives me 1 Cu2 plus plus 2Ag. Right? Pretty simple. So try, four, try 4B and 4C by yourself. Pause the video now to attempt the checkpoint. Okay, so how was it? It was, it should be pretty easy. So Al plus Pb2 plus to Al3 plus plus Pb. So similar to how I attacked part A, Al to Al3 plus involves Al losing three electrons. Al to Al3 plus, it loses three electrons. Pb2 plus, to Pb involves it gaining two electrons. So for the first equation, we times two. For the second equation, we times three. And we will get two Al plus three Pb2 plus gives me two Al3 plus plus three Pb. For the last equation, if you do likewise, you will have Cl2 plus two I minus gives you two Cl minus plus I2. All right, now let's move on to the next part of redox reactions, oxidizing and reducing agents. This is actually a very simple lead on from oxidation or reduction. So for example, let's say we have this equation. Zinc plus Cu2 plus gives me Zinc2 plus plus Cu. So from this equation, we know that Zinc is oxidized and copper 2 plus is reduced. So we say that zinc has been oxidized to zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus has been reduced to copper. So if we think about this in a little bit in a, in a different way, zinc has been oxidized to zinc 2 plus. So what has resulted in zinc being oxidized to zinc 2 plus or what has oxidized zinc to zinc 2 plus? It will be the Cu2 plus here, correct? 
because zinc is oxidized to zinc 2 plus so something must have caused the oxidation so what is the substance which have which has caused the oxidation it is Cu2 plus so because it has caused the oxidation we call it an oxidizing agent so conversely Cu2 plus has been reduced to Cu Cu2 plus has been reduced to Cu so what has caused this reduction of Cu2 plus it would be the zinc so zinc is now called the reducing agent All right so zinc is called the reducing agent because it has resulted in the reduction of Cu2 plus into Cu so if we take this one step further Cu2 plus is the oxidizing agent and the oxidizing agent itself is reduced itself is reduced zinc is the reducing agent zinc is the reducing agent so the reducing agent itself will be oxidized pretty simple right so take a look through all these points here but basically I've summarized it all in this equation here so simple examples of oxidizing agents the most common one which you'll be using the you, which you will encounter in the lab is chlorine gas and corn acid as well as KMNO4 acidified or acidified potassium manganate 7 so reducing agents are the opposite of oxidizing agents which I summarized earlier as well So let's explain one more time with this equation here. We see that copper, sorry, copper, carbon, carbon has been oxidized to carbon monoxide. So this is the oxidation reaction. Copper oxide has been reduced to copper. So this is the reduction reaction. So which one is the oxidizing agent? Correct. CuO is the oxidizing agent because it has resulted in the oxidation of carbon into carbon monoxide so which one is the reducing agent correct it is carbon because carbon has carbon has resulted in the reduction of CuO into Cu very simple right okay the next part is actually related to QA so if you recall right um, there was this QA there, there should be this QA practical where you try to test for sulfur dioxide SO2 sulfur dioxide gas so you use the test tube you have a piece of paper here and this paper you call it acidified potassium manganate 7 paper so by itself without doing anything first it is purple in color it's purple in color okay so when sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide gas is released is released it reacts with the KMnO4 and it turns the paper from purple to colorless so sulfur dioxide we say has reduced yes reduced MnO4 minus into Mn2 plus MnO4 minus is an intense purple color Mn2 plus Mn2 plus is a very 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 pale pink color almost colorless so MnO4 minus the Mn in MnO4 minus has an oxidation state of plus 7 Mn2 plus has an oxidation state of plus 2 so plus 2 to plus 7 this is a decrease so this decrease it means that it is a reduction so what has caused this reduction it is the sulfur dioxide gas so we can actually use acidified aqueous potassium manganate to test for the presence of reducing agents because once we see the color change from purple to colorless purple to colorless we know that the substance must have reduced MnO4 minus into Mn2 plus so plus 7 to plus 2 a reduction reaction so SO2 must be a reducing agent the other reagent which we can use to test for reducing agent is aqueous potassium dichromate same thing acidified so in this case it turns from orange to green for KMnO4 it is purple to colorless so procedural wise how do we do it if you recall you hold a piece of moist moist 
aqueous potassium manganate paper, which is which has been acidified over the mouth of the test tube. You wait for the gas to be produced, and when the paper changes from purple to colorless, you can conclude that the gas produced must be a reducing agent. So if we can test for reducing agents, we will also be able to test for oxidizing agents. And this test is even simpler. So we use Ki with acid. So Ki with acid, what happens? Ki has ions K plus plus I minus. So the oxidizing agent will actually oxidize I minus into I2. This is 0, this is minus 1. So you notice that minus 1 to 0, this is an oxidation. So the substance which caused this reaction must be called an oxidizing agent. So I minus by itself is colorless. I2 is a black solid. Or when it is dissolved in water, you will form a brownish, a reddish brown solution. So if you add something into acidified Ki, if you add something into acidified Ki and you see a color change from colorless to reddish brown with the formation of some black solid, this part, this time may or may not happen, depending on how much oxidizing agent you use. You can conclude straight away that the substance you added is an oxidizing agent because it has oxidized colorless I minus into I2, giving you the reddish brown solution. All right? Procedure wise, take a look through. Now we are at the last part of this topic. Not all reactions must be redox reactions. There are some reactions which are not redox reactions. For example, precipitation reactions. So if you take a look, Ag plus and Cl minus, Ag plus plus 1, Cl minus minus 1. In AgCl, Ag still remains as plus 1 and Cl still remains as minus 1. So there's no change. There's no change. No change, it means that this is not a redox reaction. Precipitation of insoluble hydroxides. Zn2 plus plus 2OH minus gives a ZnOH bracket 2. Zn still remains as 2 plus. OH still remains as minus 1. So overall, no change. It means that this is not a redox reaction. Neutralization reactions are also not redox reactions. So if we take a closer look, if you recall, the ionic equation for a neutralization reaction is OH minus plus H plus, giving you H2O. So the oxidation state of all the, at the atoms here, all the different species here, has not changed as well. It has not changed as well. So the O in OH minus is still minus 2. The H in OH minus is still plus 1. The H here is plus 1. H here is plus 1. The O here is minus 2. So effectively, there's no net change. So if there's no net change, this is not a redox reaction. All right, so we have come to the end of the redox topic. Take a quick look through, especially through page two here, which quickly summarizes what is the redox reaction or what defines oxidation and reduction. Be also very cognizant of the rules here. The rules for an element being zero the rules for simple ions, the rules for hydrogen, and the rules for oxygen. So, Because all these rules will help you solve redox reaction questions later on. So that's it for now. Thank you very much.